Do you guys remember that one website back in the day where you could put in two Pokemon and it would generate a fusion of them? Sure, the sprites were kind of wonky, but it was fun using your imagination to think about what these crazy fusions might actually look like. Well, a couple of months ago, a Pokemon fan game took the internet by storm. Pokemon Infinite Fusion seems like your classic Kanto adventure, except they took this fusion mechanic and expanded it to the max. You can take any two Pokemon that you find and fuse them together to create whatever insane abomination you want, with unique types, abilities, and most of them have custom sprites made by the community that range from hilarious bits to genuinely awesome. This game freaking rules. The process of trying to come up with different builds and combos breathes so much new life and strategy into a franchise that, let's be honest, can get a little stale after 15 years or so. Also, turning a series all about the harmony between humans and nature into a mad science experiment where you can defile nature's beautiful creations at will, quite literally playing God, is freaking hilarious. This game is also, I'll be honest, it's pretty hard. You have to figure out what all these fusion Pokemon are gonna do, boss trainers have crazy combos, the trainers are actually smart. It's really the first time that I struggled with a Pokemon game in a long, long time. Now, I could do the normal thing and just train my Pokemon up to a higher level, but that's not really the way that I roll. If I want to beat this game and have even more fun, then all I need to do is bust it wide open. This game is all about playing God, so let's play God. This is the statistically strongest Pokemon fusion. Richard! Hit that intro. God complex? Come on, Richard. Come on. You know it's not that serious. It's just a video game. It's just a fun combo. We're gonna... Oh, oh we're live? We're live? Oh, oh, oh hey there, everyone. Hey, uh, didn't see it come in. Come on, video's starting. Before breaking this game over my knee, a quick recap on how the fusion mechanic works in the game. If you already know or just don't care, then skip to this time right here. When you fuse two Pokemon, you choose one to be the head and one to be the body. The resulting fusion will have the primary type of the head and the secondary type of the body, with some exceptions. Certain Pokemon have their types swapped in the game, others have a dominant type that will always get passed down. It's a whole bunch of pun and square BS, but there's an article on the Infinite Fusion Wiki that breaks the whole thing down. If you're already playing the game and you're anything like me, then you definitely already have this open in another tab, because you check it literally every time. You get to choose between the first ability of the body Pokemon or the second ability of the head Pokemon, again with a couple of exceptions. And then lastly, for base stats, the game takes a weighted average of the base stats of each of the two input Pokemon, favoring attack, defense, and speed for the body, and special attack, special defense, and HP for the head. There's a formula to figure out what each of your base stats will be, or or you could just use an online calculator if you're lazy, but essentially each base stat for a fusion will be somewhere between that base stat for the two input Pokemon closer to the head or the body depending on which stat it is. Interestingly, this means that a specific base stat of a fusion cannot be higher than one of its inputs for that stat. Fusions tend to have stats that are more evenly distributed, which could be good, could be bad. Alright, now we know how fusions work, but there is just one more thing that I want to touch on. I could probably just pick two super strong legendary Pokemon, fuse them together, and get something completely busted and call it a day. But there's one problem with that. This game doesn't have any sort of online competitive scene, it's just the main campaign. Since most of the legendary Pokemon are locked to the post game, yeah, you could make a super strong fusion out of them, but at that point, 
you're already done. Clearly it didn't need them, and more importantly, it won't help me beat the game. So for this video, no legendaries and no Pokemon limited to the post game like Shedinja or something. All right, with all that out of the way, it's time to go full John Hammond and create some super cool monsters that spit in the face of nature. What could possibly go wrong? In a previous video, I figured out that fire and steel is statistically the best type combination in the game. That video will be linked in the description and in the end card if you want to check it out after this one to figure out how I came to that conclusion. This typing is very strong from both an offensive and defensive perspective, though many of you were quick to point out that it does have one glaring weakness. And I mean that quite literally, it's four times weak to ground, one of the best offensive typings in the game, thanks pretty much exclusively to the move Earthquake. Now, some may say that this is a beautiful bit of balancing on the part of the game creators. The most powerful type combination has such a common weakness. It's, it's almost a commentary, you know, about how even the strongest forces in this world can be overcome by something so mundane and that no creature is immortal. That is a beautiful sentiment and it doesn't apply to me. I know my evil laugh's not great. I'll work on it. With the power of fusion, we can create our very own fire and steel type with the ability levitate, turning that four times weakness into a full on immunity. All we need to do is find a fire or steel type with access to levitate and we're in the money. After consulting the list of contenders, I found that there is exactly one Pokemon that fits the bill. Bronzong. Just fuse it with a strong fire type Pokemon like Arcanine, get some powerful stab moves on there, and laugh in the face of nature itself as you force the entire Kanto region to bend the knee to your overwhelming power. What? Bronzong is not in the game yet? That's, uh, that's, uh, you know what? You know what? That's okay. That's okay. It's a bit of a bummer but it's fine. It wouldn't be science if we gave up at the first sign of adversity, right? We will find another way. If you grab yourself a Magnezone for the head and a Volcarona from the Safari Zone for the body, you can make Magnarona. With this type combo, you'll have yourself the coveted steel and fire type, since the Magnemite line is one that had its primary and secondary types switched. Grab Magnet Rise from Magnezone at level 53 to give yourself immunity to all ground type moves. After just one turn of setup, you've got yourself a base 533 Pokemon with insane resistances, great type coverage, and no four times weaknesses. Take that, nature. No. I mean, this thing is pretty good, don't get me wrong, but like, I don't know, it needs a turn to set up. You need to use up a move slot for Magnet Rise, which will immediately stop being useful after the first turn of battle. Not to mention the fact that its defenses are just okay and its HP is pretty bad. I just, uh, I don't know, I, I feel like we can do better. All right, all right, well, sticking with the type theme, the second best type combination is Steel and Flying. Very strong defensively, good coverage offensively, and it's got a built-in immunity to ground already, so we don't need to worry about that pesky levitate from Bronzong. Instead, we'll probably want a Pokemon with the ability Flash Fire or Heat Proof to take care of our fire weakness, since that's also a pretty powerful offensive type. There are no flying Pokemon with either of these abilities, but luckily, there is one Steel-type Pokemon with the ability Heat Proof, and that's Bronzong. Okay, uh, all right, let's see. Uh, uh, Bug and Steel is a great offensive type. Its only weakness is fire. So all we need to do is find a Steel type with heat proof. Uh, okay, 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 ok
Okay, uh, uh, new approach, new approach. We know that steel makes the best defensive typing, so let's just, let's start with that. And then of all the steel dual types, the strongest offensively is electric. It is weak to ground and fire though, so we'll just need to find a steel type with either the ability heat proof or levitate. <clears throat> All right, all right, all, what about this? Just grab any psychic type and any steel type, just fuse them together and you're good to go, apparently, because Bronzong is the best Pokemon in the f <sighs> Okay, okay, it's clear that this type thing isn't gonna work. I mean, no matter what I try, I met with roadblock after roadblock, or really just the same roadblock over and over. I mean, perhaps I, perhaps I should take this as a sign. A sign that nature is not meant to be meddled with. A sign that no matter what I do, I will never be able to surpass the creations forged by time itself. Or maybe I should take this as a sign that I'm not trying hard enough. Let's just forget about types for now. I mean, clearly making a super defensive Pokemon with loads of resistances is not working out. So what say we just punch someone in the face as hard as physically possible. Now, I could just find two Pokemon with the highest attack and fuse them together, but remember, base stats for fusions work on averages. So no matter what we do, our fusion is always going to have slightly less attack than one of the Pokemon we put in, with one exception. The ability huge power doubles the attack stat of whatever Pokemon has it. So, if we can make a fusion with a ton of attack and give it huge power on top of that, we could make something truly unstoppable. The only Pokemon currently in the game with huge power is Azumarill, which, I'll be honest, kind of sucks, but luckily, huge power is Azumarill's second ability. This means that we can make Azumarill the head and choose a Pokemon with super high attack and speed for the body, like, say, Aerodactyl. Since the physical stats favor the body Pokemon, we can mostly counteract Azumarill's crap base stats at- what do you mean they switched it? Alright, so my assistant Richard has just informed me that I was not the first person to think of this, and in fact the creators of the game foresaw us trying to play God like this, so they switched the order of Azumarill's abilities. Now, if you want to get a fusion with huge power, you gotta make Azumarill the body. This means that its massive 50 attack and speed are gonna severely drag down whatever Pokemon we fuse with it. God, it's almost like, it's almost like they don't want me to break the game. It's almost like I'm destined to fail. But I'm in too deep to turn back now. We need to keep pushing on. Okay, so uh, defense didn't work, attack didn't work. I mean, what else can I... Yes. Ah, uh, yes! All this time, I've been trying to make a fusion that's as strong as possible. But what if... It doesn't need to be strong. No, no, no. Its opponent just needs to be weak. <laughs> a little better? Is that a little better than last time, was it? No? Remember, kids, sometimes life's not about bettering yourself. It's about putting other people down. All you need is a Pokemon with the ability Prankster, like Whimsicott, which gives all your status moves priority. Pair that with a Pokemon that can learn Spore, like Breloom, and now you have a move that will put your opponent right to bed before they can do anything. Sure, Brekkot here isn't super strong, but that doesn't matter when your opponent literally can't do anything. Now, granted, you do still need to look out for any Grass types, which are immune to Spore. They're also... They're also the very embodiment of nature itself. This Pokemon can completely shut down gods and devils with ease, but if it is bested by a barely sentient piece of foliage, then it's not good enough. Okay, 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 okay. What about this? Think for a moment about the most dangerous Pokemon. No fusion, just the regular Pokemon that's the hardest to take down. 
For anyone who's attempted a Nuzlocke, I'm sure there's one Pokemon that comes to mind. Wobbuffet. It's got insanely high HP, so it's difficult to take down in one go, and it has Counter and Mirror Coat, so it can eat up your big hits and then deal twice the amount of damage right back to ya. There's only one issue with Wobbuffet, and that's that it has very low defenses. But, with the power of fusion, we can patch that one crack in the armor and make a Pokemon that's un- Killable. Make Wobbuffet the head to take advantage of that huge HP stat, and for the body, we want a Pokemon with the highest possible defense and special defense. We want a Pokemon that will turn our Wobbuffet into an eternal being that time itself cannot scratch. We want Shuckle. For the ability, you have a choice between Sturdy from Shuckle, which is pretty much useless, there is no way anything is gonna take you down in one hit anyway, so you're probably gonna wanna take Shadow Tag. Now you have the ultimate tank that your opponent literally cannot touch and cannot escape from. The very embodiment of death itself. Sure, Wobkull's attack and special attack are terrible. Sure, Wobkull's slower than a Pokemon, literally called Slowpoke, and sure, Wobkull's name is really hard to say. But who needs attack? Who needs to go first? All Wobkull needs is for you to hit it, and it can dish that damage back twofold all day long. And it might literally take all day long, because again, even though you could get some attacking moves from Shuckle, I mean, look at those base stats. It, I mean, it really can't do any damage without you hitting it first. And the word can't should not be in the vocabulary of our perfect fusion. We can get stronger. I already touched on the fact that Shuckle's ability Sturdy is kind of useless. The whole deal with Shuckle's fusions is that they're super tanky, so they can't get one shot anyway. But Sturdy isn't Shuckle's only ability. It also has a hidden ability, one that's not easy to get, but is devastatingly powerful if you can. Contrary makes all negative stat changes positive, and vice versa. Pair that with a Machamp, give it close combat, and now you have a base 120 fighting move that boosts your defense and special defense every time you use it. This is it. I've created the perfect Pokemon. Wrong. Shoe Champ is very slow. It has the same HP as a core fish, and it has a four times weakness to flying. An unstoppable Pokemon? Please! A common pigeon could take it out. This isn't the strongest fusion. It's a joke. I'm a joke. No matter how high your base stats, no matter how many stat boosts you get, there will always be the risk of someone outmaneuvering you, of someone scoring a critical hit, of someone killing your perfect creation before you ever had a chance. No matter how hard I try, I will always be the victim to the fickle whims of fate. I suppose maybe all the critics were right. Maybe we can never fully control nature. Maybe we cannot create perfection. You know, my assistant Richard warned me that going down this path would only lead to disappointment. No matter how strong I got, I would never be satisfied. He called it having a god complex. I call it progress. I will find the perfect fusion. I'm just not looking Hard. Enough. If you venture deep into the bayou of Route 15, you'll come across a small, abandoned house. Some claim that this place is haunted, that any who enter will suffer a terrible fate. But I don't hold with such nonsense. After venturing down into the basement with only a flashlight to show the way, found it. 
Whether it's a spirit of the dead risen again, or a mortal creature masquerading as something more, I care not. All I'm interested in is the pursuit of science, and Mimikyu's signature ability, Disguise. This ability makes it so the first attack that damages it, no matter how powerful it is, will deal zero damage. A guaranteed free turn to do whatever you want. The perfect starting point for an unkillable Pokemon. And now, to find the compliment. I could pair it with something elegant, something that brings out Mimikyu's natural strengths in a beautiful harmony of symbiosis. Or, I could go for raw power. Slacking is a Pokemon with a base stat total on par with most legendary Pokemon. However, its ability Truant requires it to rest every other turn, making it virtually useless. But, if we combine Mimikyu's Disguise ability with Slacking's massive base stat total, we can create Mimicking. It hits hard, it can absorb hits without taking any damage, and its rare ghost and normal type grants it immunity to three types. Offensively, defensively, Mimicking can do it all. The strongest possible fusion in the game is Mimikyu and Slacking. I've done it. Now, I can finally beat the game. I've solved the puzzle. I've broken the rules. I've bested nature. I've bested fate. I've bested the very makers of this world. They all tried to stop me, but still, I prevailed. I've created the world's strongest Pokemon. My work is done. So why do I still feel so empty. After discovering this combo, I booted up Pokemon Infinite Fusion, I got myself a Mimikyu and a Slacking, and I fused them together, and I started testing it out on some random trainers. And like, it's strong, it's a strong Pokemon, it's a great tank, it hits pretty hard, it just, it didn't feel like an unstoppable Pokemon. It felt like just a regular Pokemon. All my effort, all the trials I had to overcome, all the problems I solved, and yet I am left exactly where I started. Still wanting more. All this time I thought I just wasn't trying hard enough. I thought if I kept pushing, kept searching, I would eventually find the strongest Pokemon. And then I could beat this game. Then I would be happy. But maybe... It wasn't my methods that were flawed. Maybe it was the very question itself. Maybe if I had spent less time searching for the next best thing and took the time to appreciate the Pokemon I already had, to develop bonds with them, help them grow to be the best they could be. If I stopped looking for external power and taught my Pokemon to understand the power that's inside, maybe I could have beaten the game by now. And maybe actually had some fun while doing it. I thought that having unlimited power would finally make me feel fulfilled, but I see now that life is not that simple. Or maybe it is just that simple. I wasn't feeling empty because of some hard-learned lesson about the futility of a quest for power to fill an ever-expanding void of dissatisfaction in my heart. I was feeling empty because I haven't found the strongest fusion yet. Let's go back to those Shuckle fusions from before. I was so focused on optimizing Shuckle's unique base stats that I didn't even consider its moveset. Shuckle gains access to the move Shell Smash, which raises your attack, special attack, and speed by two stages each, while lowering your defense and special defense. Normally on Shuckle, this is not super helpful. Shuckle's attack and speed are so low that even doubling them won't help much. Even so, it is a very powerful setup move, and with the right fusion, we could turn a Shell Smashing Shuckle from a bad gimmick into a god killer. The answer is simple. 
The ability Simple doubles the effects of all stat changing moves, meaning that Shell Smash would now raise its attack, special attack, and speed by four stages each. In fairness, it would also have your defenses, which is pretty debilitating. Unless you plan ahead and give it a white herb to hold, which negates any negative stat changes that occur on a single turn. This means that with just one move, just one turn to set up, you can triple your attack, special attack, and speed with no downsides. But the question remains, will this actually work? Is this a combo that you can actually make in the main game and use on your team to dominate the league? Or is it nothing but a pipe dream? Another bronzong-shaped thorn in my side, an ideal that we can strive for, but never hope to reach? Well, Shuckle can be found by simply smashing rocks in most caves in the game. As for simple, there exists one, and only one Pokemon line currently in the game that gets access to this ability. To make this fusion, you'll need a Shuckle for the head. And for the body, you'll first need to obtain the Poke Radar from the scientists north of Cerulean City. Head back to Viridian City, go into the grass on Route 22. Here, you will find the Pokemon we are looking for. The other half of the equation that will make me a god among gods. Here, you will find a Bidoof. Evolve it into a B-Barrel. Fuse it with Shuckle and you will give birth to the creator and the destroyer of worlds, Shubarel. Now, a sprite for this fusion already exists in the game designed by B-Button27. And it's pretty fitting, a Shuckle with a shell shaped like a B-Barrel. I mean, it's cute, it works, but it's clear that B-Button27 did not understand the gravity of the task they were undertaking. They did not realize that they were giving physical form to a divine arbiter of destruction, the perfect life form. So, I reached out to fellow YouTuber and sprite artist RetroNC, and together we made this. Like Michelangelo depicting God and Adam, Retro NC has given Shubarel a form fitting its incomprehensible power. Looking at its base stats, Shubarel seems unassuming. Bug and Water is a fine type combination. It's got high defenses, but aside from that, it has the same base stat total as an Aromatisse. However, with just one Shell Smash White Herb combo. Just one turn to cast off its shackles and let loose its full power. It effectively turns from this into this. It has the attack stat of a Mega Rayquaza. It's faster than a Mega Mewtwo. It has the HP of a Charmander, and it has the base stat total of 730. Higher than every Mega Evolution. Higher than every box art legendary. Higher than Arceus itself. I've been using the word divine to describe Shubarel, but I can see now that putting this being on the same level as any god would be a demotion, an insult to its power. Shubarel is not a god, it's the being that killed god. And if I created the thing that killed god, then what does that make me- Okay, okay, I hear it now, yep, yep, the whole god complex thing, yep, yeah, I hear it, I see it, uh-huh. <laughs>